Nathan Fields. Present. Councilwoman Vegeta Fields. Present. I'm sorry, Councilman uh, Member Fields. Um, Council Member James Padola. Present. Count, uh, President um, Ernest Trippi Congo. And myself, Councilwoman Xanthi Oliver. Okay, as a friendly reminder, only members of the committee should be making motions and seconding. And with that, we're going to get started with the agenda. First, we have Ordinance 22042, Ordinance to Authorize the Approval of Two Year Extension of Contract 22029W, Street Paving Between the City of Wilmington and Sam's Construction. Is there someone here to speak regarding this um, ordinance? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Vince Croce, Deputy Commissioner, Department of Public Works. I'm here to represent the uh, administration uh, on uh, this particular ordinance. This is a uh, street paving contract that was competitively bid um, in the first year. It's currently in its first year. We wish to uh, add two one-year extensions uh, to the contract um, with Sam's Construction. They've been doing a fine job since we've uh, left the contract. Thank you, Vince. Um, and they are doing a good job with paving the streets. I can tell the difference. Um, are there any questions from the members of City Council? And are there any questions from anyone from the public? Is there any hands up, Kendra, from anyone uh, from Council? Okay. Um, I don't have any questions. Oh, okay. Councilwoman Hardy. Beg your pardon? Councilwoman Hardy. Councilwoman Hardy uh, is on. Do you have any questions or you just want to be uh, noticed to be attending? Yes, wanted to be acknowledged. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Our chair. Thank you, um, Council Member Harley. I'm sorry. Council President Congo. Uh, and we would like to acknowledge Council President Congo. And Councilman Thank you. And who else? Council Member Bracey. Oh, and Council Member Bracey's on the line. I mean, on verse. Bracey? Council Member Bracey? Okay. Okay, Vince, thanks a lot. We have, any, we have no questions. That's kind of housekeeping. Next, we have Ordinance 2204, Ordinance to Authorize the Approval to Your Extension Contract of 23. Oh, that's so true. Thank you so much. I'm busy moving so fast. Okay, that is an ordinance, so it has to be voted out committee. Is there a motion to move this commit this ordinance out of committee? Motion. So second. It's been properly moved and second. The ordinance is voted out of committee. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carried. Next, we have Ordinance 22004, authorizing approval of two year extension of contract 23002 uh, WD Buller Inspection and Maintenance Service between the City of Wilmington and AA Duckler Inc. Um, Vince, you want to speak? Um, yes, Madam Chair, thank you. So, this is a, uh, an, uh, a boiler contract uh, for inspection and maintenance services at our water facilities with uh, between the city of Wilmington and the AA Ducket. We have used them in the past. They're doing a, a good job for us now, and we wish to uh, exercise two one-year extensions on that contract. Thank you, Vince. Do we have any members of council that have any questions? Council Member Harley. Council Member Harley. I have my hand up before you announce this particular ordinance, so I'm going to wait for you to finish that, and then I'll come back and make my statement. It's, it has nothing to do with this ordinance. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have any um, members from the public that would like to speak towards this housekeeping? Well, Vince, I would like to say we definitely need clean water here in the city of Wilmington, oh. so I'm glad that this is, contract has been extended. And this is an ordinance, so it is to be voted out of committee. Um, this has been properly. Can we have a motion to have this ordinance moved out of committee? 
Motion. What's the one second? I second. Second. It. Okay. It's been properly moved and second. Ordinance to be voted on committee. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. Uh, ordinance 22049 has been held for tonight. Um, now we have a resolution uh, that doesn't have to be um, voted out of committee. This is a resolution approving a department, a public works 2022 project planning to advance the water waste drinking water project application to DENREC. Um, Vince, are you going to speak in regards to this resolution? I am. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this uh, Department of Public Works has submitted a uh, project planning advances grant application with DENREC requesting grant assistance in the amount of $100,000 for Adams Street Green Infrastructure Project. Uh, this uh, green infrastructure project uh, is a multi-benefit project that will enhance both the aesthetics and recreational amenity of the city gateway and provide stormwater management consistence with the city's Clean Water Act. Uh, Public Works through our combined sewer overflow long-term control plan has committed to using uh, green stormwater infrastructure uh, towards meeting our regulatory obligations to reduce the frequency and volumes of CSOs. Uh, this project is in an area of the city that currently experiences uh, a high number of uh, CSO occurrences. Uh, the proposed rain gardens and swales will capture and retain stormwater from the adjacent streets, reducing the runoff that enters the city's combined sewer system, thus reducing the potential for CSOs in that area. Vince, I do have a question. I mean, I, I already discussed it with you, but just for the public, what part of Adams Street are you um, talking about? This would be the 300 block on the uh, on the west uh, west side of the street. There's a open open land in, in that area that we're looking at. Okay. Do we have any other um, questions from any council members? Oh, do we have any questions from anyone from the public? Councilman Harley. <laughs> Again, I'll wait until after this ordinance so I can speak. So if you can remember to call me after y'all vote on this ordinance, that would be great. Okay. Well, it's a resolution. It doesn't have to be voted out. Um, I just need to, what day would this be on the agenda for city? February 2nd. Okay, this is a resolution. It doesn't have to be voted out. It will be on February 2nd. City Council. Okay. Council thank you. Member Harley, would you like to make a statement? Yes, thank you, um, Madam Chair. I just wanted to say for the record, Ordinance 22049, the one that is being held, the ordinance to amend Chapter 37 of the City Code to extend the fire lane along the entire extension of Christina Landon Drive. Um, that legislation was requested to me to be held um, by the um, resident that submitted it. So I wanted to, to say it on record that that's why it's being held. And in case there are um, residents that wanted to hear that, I wanted them to know just in case they called in just for that particular piece of legislation. So thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Harley. Um, next, we have a presentation regarding the Rodney Reservoir by uh, Green for the Greater Good. Uh, who will be speaking um, towards this? Who will be uh, doing the presentation? If you can come up and say your name. And we don't ask questions. We just hear what you have to say. Okay, and, wonderful. And you have three minutes. Okay. Oh, actually, I'm here. Uh, I have a 10 to 15 Pre minute presentation. Actually, okay. Deck. Oh, this is, you're doing the presentation. I'm sorry. No problem. Okay, you want to have a seat and do it? You can sit down if you're doing your presentation. You don't have to stand up. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Sure. Okay, speaking of the mic. Okay. Wonderful. Can you hear me? Great. Yes. Okay. So we have 10 minutes. I'm with you. Okay. And could you, um, uh, before you speak, please um, say your name and if you have a title. If not, just for the record. Sure. 
My name is Jamila Davey. I am a member of Green for the Greater Good. Um, I am a, a professor at local colleges here. I just came from DCAD teaching a class this evening, and I teach at Goldie Beacom as well. So I'm a member of this community. I live down the street from the Rodney Reservoir, about a block away, um, and I garden up there, um, like many of my neighbors, and that's what brings me here. Um, and uh, Phyllis? My name is Phyllis um, Mobley, and I'm a resident, too, of 1103 North Broom Street, and have been there in the city for a while. Um, what brought me to um, the reservoir is I'm a teacher, I'm an educator, and I'm a middle school teacher, but uh, PS DuPont Middle School, but was an uh, elementary school teacher at Harlem Elementary, and I noticed that kids really weren't eating well. Okay, excuse me. Yeah. I'm going to start with the presentation. Okay, sorry, Not cut. That's okay. I'm going to give you time to yeah. come. I just want to go ahead. Wonderful. So um, here's a picture of the reservoir. We can start here. And can we go to the next slide, please? So I want to start by invoking um, one of the things we're really looking to get out of this meeting, which is um, to have the council hear us about this need for a community-driven process around the, the Rodney Reservoir. So I want to start with this point, and maybe others will speak to this and comment, uh, but resident-driven revitalization has been very successful in our neighborhood. You see here, um, circled on the map here, several of the local parks that were um, redesigned with community input, uh, with work of local partners like um, Cornerstone West CDC, Westside Grows Together and and neighborhood associations like Cool Spring, um, Tilton Neighborhood Association. So it's a we you know, we've seen a lot of success with community driven processes, leveraging funds from multiple pots of money and building attachment to these spaces even as they're being um, um, designed. So can we go to the next slide, please? We want us, us to kind of now focus in on the Rodney Reservoir. Again, if we could go to the next slide. Um, and think about a sense of place. So um, the Rodney Red Reservoir is literally the top of the hill on the west side. Um, it sits at the top of the ridge of two watersheds. You can see that it has you know, rock formations beneath it here. Um, it is um, at a s height of about 235 feet. Um, and it is a unique site with a sense of place that Wilmingtonians have long uh, recognized as a place of importance. Can we go to the next slide, please? Um, it has a long history of public use. I've looked at the historical atlases. It's never been, pub it's never been developed um, by private interests. Of course, we have a reservoir on it, and we can debate what that means in terms of development thus far. But it's been a community green space for over 150 years. You can see on the slide the variety of activities that have gone on up there, for everywhere from a professional football team, the, the Wilmington Chess Rooks. You know, and I read and learning about this, there's a lot of professional football teams in the history of Wilmington, um, but also concerts. Um, there's the whole Cold War era um, observation tower with the Housewives Leagues. Um, for a time, you could see for four states up there. Um, and in the 80s and 90s, we had basketball courts, that kind of thing. Uh, it was fenced off after, I don't know the whole story, but after 9-11, um, when the communication tower went in, the fence went up, and we stopped having access to it. Um, and no neighbors who, that lived here then will be able to speak to that a little more. Um, but in 2010, we started to see the door opening just a little bit um, as uh, community members um, came together to um, get permission from the city to start gardening at the site. Can we go to the next slide, please? So in 2010, um, neighbors worked with, um, uh, in combination with partners like Delaware Center for Horticulture and Cornerstone West CDC um, to build this garden. And it actually became, and others may speak to this as well, um, an engine for you know, resident-driven projects around the west side um, that have been very successful. It actually led to um, the growth of West Side Grows Together and some of those other um, re revitalization initiatives we saw on the earlier slide. So. Um, this is, it's grown now, it's got 60 plots, over 100 active gardeners, and anyone can join. Um, it's a nominal fee to, be, to participate, about um, $30 a year, somewhere around that. They can correct me on that. 35, okay, thank you. Um, and uh, so this is a start. Um, so next slide, please. Um, and our story tonight starts um, back in May when we learned that the city of Wilmington had made a request to the Bond Bill Committee for funds to, to, you know, to do work at the, the site, to demolish it, um, and the state did award funds with the proviso that um, the city engage in comprehensive development and com comprehensive planning and community engagement, that is. So um, we um, started meeting. That's the corner of Clayton and Ninth right there, and there's a bunch of neighbors you see and the mayor. Um, 
um, at one of our meetings, um, we started meeting every Saturday to talk about this, and we came together around you know these the key goals. We want this to stay a public asset. We do not want to sell off our land, this special spot on the west side. We want it to keep it public. We want it to be safe. Whatever is going to happen, the process should be safe. It should be made safe, um, and um, we want it to be green, a green space for our community. And this moment made us realize that we didn't have access to it fully. So um, we also came together around that, that we want our whole community to enjoy its use. We go to the next page. So um, we, um, Green for the Greater Good is really an organization made up of just neighbors, you know, who are concerned about our neighborhood. Um, and we were committed to realizing the community engagement part of what the Bond Bill Committee, you know, um, designated for these funds. And, and because of our love for the space. So we started having events, inviting the neighborhood up into the um, event space, up into the community garden, that is, to talk to them, to let them know that we have this opportunity to shape the future of the space in our community and to hear from people. And I want to thank um, the members of the, the council that have come out. Um, council Member Spadola you came to our, our July event, and uh, Councilwoman Fields um, was at several of our meetings, and. Councilman Field also attended some, so we really do appreciate your support and talk you, that you talk with us and that you're here. Um, so we were having events, you know, to get the word out. Then we started to collect ideas. We had our first community visioning Zoom before the um, end of the year um, and started putting together ideas. Um, we've been asking for a task force. I'll come back to that. Um, and we um, these conversations quite organically led to us making a connection with Lewis um, Dual Language Elementary School. They had been looking for somewhere to garden for two years, and we were able to make the connect um, with the help of um, Healthy Foods for Healthy Kids, a wonderful organization that's bringing gardening into schools around Delaware, um, so that they started gardening with us this year. And you see them harvesting radishes. And I just want to say that in 2010, Harlan had students that were coming in and helping to create the gardens, the 10 gardens. And Lewis Elementary saw the example of the Harlan students. And I think that's what happened. Kids started eating healthy, talking to their parents about foods that they wanted in the grocery store. They started to see the connection between science and actual uh, nutrition. And it changed the way that they ate and saw you know, their lives and their um, families' lives. The one thing that we want is for this space to be a green lab so that children can uh, continue to look at how we can um, use sustainable, you know, energy sources, how we can um, look at um, building green, you know, buildings. Just have it a space that's outdoors, but also that's educative for kids in the city, as well as multi-generational, not just kids, but also elders. Excuse, excuse me, I'm going to let her um, finish the slide, and then I'm going to let you speak so we can just keep some oh, order. That is, that is that okay? Okay, let's move to your next slide. That was a great transition. It's tro know. totally oh, natural. Oh, Go for it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's hear this. Sorry. I'm so sorry. No, Go ahead. It's okay. I'm so sorry. And Kendra, would you mind playing that video? Would you mind pressing play on the video in the bottom? Oh, W-I-T. Um, there it is. Okay, there's no audio. Well, that's them coming in. Let me hand it off to Phyllis. Go ahead. So um, these are the um, students that are from um, the dual language um, Lewis uh, Elementary School. And one of the things that they are learning, they're doing the connection between science and also nutrition, as well as um, community um, service. And one of the things we want to do is to push this even further so that we will be able to support you know, um, churches, um, not for profit organizations with um, food supplies from the garden and have even a more diverse group of gardeners. When we started off, the uh, garden wasn't as diverse as it is now. And as um, Jamila said, we've opened it up to the community. And I think that's um, very important. We want to turn it into a green lab for both students as well as elders. Thank you. We advance two slides, maybe? Mm -hmm. And that's a student that, Sorry. yeah, that's a student that I had, middle school student, um, and we had about um, 15 students that worked in the garden in uh, 2010 and helped not only, you know, um, build the um, plots, but also maintain the plots when gardeners weren't there. They took the responsibility to care for their plots. So it was a lot of com community service activities as well as transferring that knowledge back into the classroom. We saw the scores increase in science, especially in biology. Oh, great. Okay, next. Next slide. Uh, so 
I, do we have a few more minutes here? That, can we go to 15? Sure. I okay. Give you, Keep going. I get, yeah, 10 minutes. I gave you three more minutes because we have a lot of people that may want to speak. Okay. okay. So the, uh, the next slide gives some of the ideas that the community's come up with. I don't know if you want to speak to some of those, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Next slide, please. So we talked about expanding the existing community garden beds. Also that we wanted to um, bring urban agri agriculture to the city. And we talked about the donations to community center, churches, et cetera. But the big thing, I think, in the future is green technology and urban um, agriculture and designing an outdoor lab for students um, in the city as well as other parts of Wilmington to come and to collaborate on green learning about green infrastructure, rainwater management, green technologies, food security and insecurity, and uh, also the issues related to urban uh, sustainability. We thought about creating outdoor classrooms, amphitheaters, movie spaces, a lot of uh, pickleball courts, uh, walking trails, and just a lot of community um, composting um, capacity so that we are using what nature brings us naturally to fertilize the beds. Wonderful. And can we go to the next slide? So this is our action plan. So. Um, one of the things that, you know, um, in talking with Phyllis that she brought out to me, too, she's one of the early gardeners. We have some of the, the people who are here from the beginning in this room. And um, just the way the um, um, functions start to stack after a while. So we are really excited about this space being a place that different organizations can come together and realize their projects, something that is special to our neighborhood but also unique to Wilmington somehow, um, you know, in, in the sense that it can serve a variety of projects, maybe be a hub or for a, a hub spoke model to um, share resources. Um, and we believe that, you know, that by working together, community working together, we can build stack functions, you know, meet multiple needs at once, those kinds of things. So what we want to do, um, so our top concern, of course, with anything that's to happen is we want to make sure we're safe. Um, we know the city's been doing some work towards that. We are excited to hear from them and to have a conversation about what they've learned um, and all the stuff they've done. Um, and we really want to involve our community. And to that end, we think the answer is to start a tax force where we can bring stakeholders together, get the community involved so that we can come together around a vision and come, come together through the process and come out with some great ideas. Um, and we do want the council, we do want your support in committing to making this a, 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 a permanent public green space. And we want you to know that we're here to address the problems, okay. address issues. And can we just say that one thing, kids need green space. Right. Okay, I just want to thank both of y'all. You did an excellent job on presentation. Thank you so much. Really you. good. Um, next, we have um, Mr. Vince that would like to say a few words from Public Works. Mr. Vince. Okay, um, can WITM bring up the uh, presentation that I emailed them, please? Thank you. All right, so I'm going to uh, give the um, administration's um, you know, outlook view and ideas of, of what we've done as far as Rodney Reservoir and uh, its uh, the demo plan. If you can go to the next slide, please. Okay, so this is a very brief history. Rodney Reservoir, uh, originally, uh, the original Rodney Reservoir was constructed in 1863 as an open air finished water reservoir. This would have been not unlike the old Cool Spring Reservoir down next to Ursuline. This reservoir uh, remained in service until 1908 when it was abandoned. Uh, in December of 1915, work began on the current Rodney Reservoir, which is a seven and a half million gallon covered finished water tank. Uh, reservoir remained in service until the uh, 1990s when it was abandoned due to water quality issues. If you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, the, what, this is the why. Why are we talking about demoing? So there's a, within these next couple slides, you'll see some of the interior shots uh, of the ceiling roof area of the, uh, the reservoir. If you could go to the next slide, uh, please. Uh, this just shows rebar and deterioration of the slab. This is the reason we fenced the area off because these uh, um, areas of the roof between the girders are, are not safe. Uh, someone could walk on it and potentially could fall through 20 feet. If you could go to the next slide, please. 
Uh, these are some sample uh, cores that were taken and sent out for lab analysis. Uh, and you can see the delamination of the material and the bituminous concrete uh, cap that was placed on it. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is what uh, the current Rodney Reservoir looked like uh, September of uh, 22. You can see the gardens and then the raised area and the gatehouse is the area where the tank is. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, what are our goals? Uh, number one, to eliminate the current safety hazards, to minimize the volume of material moving in and out of the site during demolition, maximize the amount of usable green space for the final condition, maintain the appearance of the property, recycle as much of the material as possible, minimize noise generation and manage stormwater effectively. Uh, can you change the slides, please? Okay, so a uh, couple of things that we, uh, that we, we uh, looked at here. Um, as far as alternative uh, alternative plans, uh, we um, the city had uh, had proposed a modification demo plan because uh, a, a, we modified the plan from what we originally looked at because we thought that uh, a thousand or more truckloads of debris removal would be unreasonably disruptive. Um, the city can consider taking the site to grade level. Uh, if the community would prefer that option, uh, the city expects the future of the site to be a passive parkland or open space. The property cannot be used for any other development purpose without council action and uh, the community will be part of any future uh, planning uh, for future uses. Next slide, please. This one, next slide. All right, so I, if you can go to the next slide, I just want to talk a little bit about pre-demolition testing. Um, so the city has uh, completed hazardous materials uh, testing of both structures and soils. There has been no asbestos found anywhere on the site, including the buildings and concrete. There are no reportables of VOCs, uh, SVOCs, pesticides, or PCBs. The only reportable metal that was found was cobalt, which is often naturally occurring. A residential uh, risk assessment for cobalt was prepared uh, for uh, DENREC per uh, their guidelines. Uh, presence of cobalt uh, was found to pose no unacceptable risk to humans. The city will notify DENREC with a minimum 30 days advance notice per uh, regulations before any work was to be, is to begin. Uh, the reported associated, uh, was associated with our soil sampling is currently being finalized by the city's outside engineering uh, consultant. And uh, the city has conducted all environmental due diligence as it relates to this site and its plan demolition. If you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, the demolition plan um, for, uh, for the reservoir. So uh, we've, we've changed, uh, you know, the first thing we looked at was potentially hauling it, everything off site and, and taking it to grade level. Um, we realized that there'd be a tremendous amount of noise disruption and so forth. So we came up with a modified plan and that's what I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about now. We would access the reservoir from 8th Street, uh, erosion sediment control around the perimeter of the site, clear and grub the area of vegetation and where we'll be working, demo the gatehouse completely, leaving only a foundation that will be buried slab to be broken and allowed for drainage. Uh, demo the reservoir, uh, roof walls and columns, all concrete debris to be buried in, on site. So uh, concrete munchers would munch that up uh, uh, to 12 inches or less size and everything would be buried on site. We would grade the entire site level from Rodney to Clayton and sloping downwards 1% from uh, 8th to 9th Street. If you can go to the next slide, please. Okay, all areas uh, that are disturbed as part of construction would be seated. Existing sidewalks along 8th Street and the sidewalk running between the two sets of stairs down by the garden area will be replaced. We'll have to get into that one sidewalk because the piping that allowed the water to flow in and out of the reservoir uh, needs to be abandoned properly and uh, capped off and, uh, you know, and a spool piece installed to, to make the, all the plumbing and the piping that is still in service uh, to keep that active. Trees between the sidewalk and the streets maintained uh, along Rodney and Clayton will, will all be uh, maintained and, and remain. Anticipated work hours uh, were between seven and, and five daily with an anticipation, anticipated uh, duration for the uh, demolition to be four months. You get in the next slide, please. This is what we've uh, foresee the uh, Rodney looking like in the future post uh, demolition, essentially the area where the tank and the, uh, 
the gatehouse are now would essentially be at the same level as the uh, the gardens, the uh, existing fencing stone uh, brick columns uh, around the uh, perimeter of the block would uh, would all remain. Sidewalks would be renewed, and uh, H Street by most likely will end up getting re be repaved uh, by the time we're done, based on the, uh, the the traffic in and out of there, so that uh, we can restore it. So that's that's all I have. Thank you. Um, thank you, Vince. Uh, I do have a question. Um, so when you say when it's completed, are they going to still be able to have their garden? What you just said, I was going to this. That, that's correct. So the, the area of the gardens uh, to the, from the, you know, from the sidewalk actually to the north close to 9th Street will, will not be disturbed as part of the demo work. We'll be essentially working inside the tank. The walls around the tank will remain uh, up. Uh, to mitigate uh, uh, noise attenuation throughout the neighborhood, uh, be using water for dust control and so forth. Uh, and by doing it this way, we you know we eliminate what could be a thousand truckloads of material leaving the site. You know, roughly uh, 10,000 cubic yards. So we we felt that it was uh, it was better to just kind of collapse everything in and then push the dirt uh, back over top of it. Uh, we've surveyed it to make sure that. Uh, the cut and fills of the uh, of the contractor's model look are, are correct. Where we'll, we, that's why we're fairly confident on on what the what the finished product will look like based on our surveying data. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any questions from city council members? I'm sorry, uh, Councilman Spadola. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Commissioner, um, for the anticipated work hours. This, this is just Monday through Friday. Is that right? That is yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Just wanted to clarify. And just you know, for the record, too, the uh, the folks live on Eighth Street in that in that block. Uh, we will make provisions for them to be able to get in in and out of the block. Uh, it'll be closed. Uh, you know, some of it will be closed fairly wide street, but we will make provisions for them to be able to get in and out. But that was uh, that's the lower side, of the, uh, the lowest side of the site, and it was deemed uh, the most uh, advantageous for the contractor to uh, to work from that side and allows us to not have to close down uh you know a potential lane on rodney or on clayton street that's that's why it was selected do we have any other council members that have any questions okay if none um is there council, any, i'm sorry councilwoman um i do madam chair okay uh councilman fields yes um i would like to say first of all i'd just like to say thank you to to um, the members and the constituents of the 5th District, as well as the 7th District, for bringing this presentation to my colleagues to show them that the effort that they've put in um, is such a great effort and the detailed information that they're bringing forth um, to the entire community. Um, and, you know, just keeping me and my colleagues abreast of what's going on. And I'm glad that we're, we'll, we will all be able to work together um, as one collective task force um, as far as the constituents, council, and the administration. So again, thank you, Ms. Davey. Thank you, everybody else. I can't call everybody name by name, but thank you so much for keeping me abreast and sending me my email and keeping me engaged. So thank you, guys. Um, and I really appreciate the presentation. Thank you. Sure. Do we have any um, other um, comments from any other council members? Anyone's hand up? Um, I must say Councilman Fields has really... Um, kept us abreast on this so she has really been very concerned about this uh green for greater good because every time i speak to her she's talking about the constituents over there <laughs> so i just want you to know she is very um very uh aware of what's going on over there next do we have anyone from the public you have three minutes and we don't an we don't answer questions we just listen to your comments um first we have um hc uh Geshman. would you like to get up and speak sure you, you okay now? Thank you, sir. Thanks for coming out. Um, next, we have Mickey. Mikey? Mickey yeah, that's your last. Okay, yeah. Which? Right here. Just speak right here. You have, just to make your comments. Hi. Um, I'm Mikey Reffy. I live on Franklin Street. Uh, and we moved here in nine, 1999 when the reservoir had not yet been fenced. And it was a really lovely public space. So I just, you know, I support keeping it open and green. I like to see that in the city presentation. And I really want to see the task force get started and see 
that part of the bond bill uh, stipulation, you know, carried forth. And it sounds like it is. So I'm just saying I, I fully support the idea of the task force Thank and uh, keeping it safe, open, and green. I go by there all the time. Thanks a lot. Next, we have Mr. Jordan Howe. Thank you. My name is uh, Jordan Howe. I wrote an op-ed for the News Journal not that long ago um, calling for the demolition of Rodney Reservoir, and I'm just very excited to see uh, the city's plan today to do just that because, you know, as we do know, it is dangerous. Um, you know, as the uh, Deputy Director of Public Works just, uh, you know, explained that the site itself, you know, is dangerous, and we are excited that kids are going up there to learn about, uh, you know, uh, you know, green space and how to pl where their food comes from. But of course, we don't want anyone to actually fall into the tank. That would be a tragedy. And so I'm very excited to see that. Um, my one of my um, uh, one thing I've often spoke with uh, the neighbors about is that if the public pays for the demolition of the Rod Rodney Reservoir, then the site should stay in public hands. And uh, you know, so long as you know that is the case, um, you know, I fully support its demolition and the council's uh, uh, coordination with the community and. Uh, and just um, you know, to bring this point home too, I'm I'm also a gardener at the reservoir. I've been there for uh, I think uh, going on my third year now, and as you know, and as much as I do love the garden, that is not my only the only thing that I would like to see come from the reservoir. So just make sure that you know as this process moves forward, that you are engaging with the entire community, um, you know, not just gardeners or not just West Side Grows, in order to see the site developed in a way that suits the broader community. Thank That's you. it. Thank you. Next, we have Christian. Um, Christian. Christian. Hello, Council, Councilwoman Oliver, Chair. Thank you so much for sure. giving us the chance to speak. And Councilman Spadola, thank you for um, your efforts to learn more about this project. Um, I live in the west side. I live a couple blocks from the Rodney Reservoir. I come in and out of my neighborhood by the reservoir. I you know, walk around the neighborhood. It's just a really big part of um, like my community. And I am here tonight just because um, I've been involved in um, efforts to improve neighborhood green spaces in the west side for a long time and really got started actually at the Rodney Reservoir um, because at the time it was completely fenced off and a bunch of us residents got together and we wanted to open it up again to the public and so we worked with the city in, in collaboration with um, the city administration at that time and with West End Neighborhood House and Cornerstone to create the Rodney Reservoir Garden um, and bring people back to be able to be using the space after it had gotten fenced off. And, um, you know, that led to West Side Grows, that led to um, this experience of how residents getting involved in their neighborhood green spaces can be really, really good for the neighborhood. And I, um, you know, I had the opportunity to work at West Side, to run, you know, to launch West Side Grows and to run West Side Grows for. Um, its first uh, six, seven years. And one of the core parts of West Side Grows was developing the West Side Plan. And one of the core parts of the West Side Plan was how green spaces and improving our green spaces can make better neighborhoods. And so we did this whole series of community playground design projects where we got like neighbors involved and then they worked with the city and with Denrec um, and looked at different sites, like all these different parks in the West Side. And then we used those designs to, um, to improve, like to make renovations to the, to the sites. And that led to, we were able to leverage like millions of dollars to improve the sites. So that's what we want to see at the Rodney Reservoir, is a task force, a community engaged design process, and a commitment from the city to not do any demolition there until that design is in place and the money is in place to make the new green space, because we know that if you do demolition, like you should do it all at once. It should be demolition Excuse plus me, your design time, plus. I'm sorry, anyway. your time is up. And okay, this is thank you so much. This, and this is not the end of this conversation, so this is ongoing. So feel free to come back in any time. Okay, but thank we you. We have another person that would like to speak. Um, is it Tom Nato? Nato? Is Tom on? Is, oh. How you doing, Tom? Good. How are you? Great. Thomas Natoli. 
Yeah, with, uh, the Tolton, that's right saying. across from the Tolton Park. Okay. Um, I'll be quick because it's only three minutes. Um, so a couple things. If this is demolished, which I agree with, it should be public. There's a lot of like words going around that this is public and open. It's been fenced off since I've lived here. It's a locked gate. You have to pay to use it. So public green space should be for every resident in Wilmington. Two, I agree with the task force, but hopefully council will not fall into this list of every single task force and neighborhood association friends of group that's been formed, which is pretty much <laughs> not real. You know, that, that happened with Cool Spring Park and Playground. So make sure you focus on that too and get a good group of neighbors. Um, I agree with the gardening. I, I, I'm still a member there. I'm pretty sure I'll be kicked out, but whatever. Um, but my other concern and I hold this you know, dear to my heart, you know, they take kids up there. That's awesome, I'm all for kids. However, when I asked one of their members, what about the handicapped kids? His reply was, well, we don't have any. Well, I find that highly offensive. Mm -hmm. So all these great things, you know, it, you can rush and do it, but do it right. And I just want this council to hear everyone, not just green for the greater good, not these like checklists of what we do to pull the wool over the city's eyes. You know, stay focused. I agree with tearing it down. You know, it, when you come down to like, oh, it's an inconvenience with the with the trucks. Hey, ninety five. How long has that been going on? The jackhammering. You know, it's inconvenient. But let's do it right. This has been going on what? 100 years or so they've been trying to tear it down make it usable so do it right don't just like pile stuff in it should be brought down to ground and make it actually usable every inch of that could be green space as they want to do is bring more green space then do it you know don't just speak about it actually do it so thank you thank you um next we have um is it rochelle Rachel Terracy. Oh, I can't understand the handwriting. I'm sorry. Is it Rachel? Rachel on the line? Okay. We'll come back. Is Rose on the line? Rose here? Oh, Rachel's here. Rachel. Okay, let's go back to Rachel. Oh, hello. Rachel. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, you have three minutes, Rachel. You can make your public comments regarding the reservoir. Wonderful. Thank you. So um, my name is Rachel Teresina. I am with Healthy Foods for Healthy Kids. Um, and as was pre previously mentioned in um, the presentation, we have recently partnered with Lewis, Lewis Dual Language Elementary School and Green for the Greater Good to turn two of their garden plots into uh, the school garden. So um, I just kind of wanted to celebrate the fact that we do have over 400 students annually that will be using um, that space, not only to kind of explore their outdoor world, but to grow vegetables and get experience um, having special jobs in the garden and also eating the vegetables they grow. Um, the main reason I'm here today is to support uh, the concept of turning this demolition into a, um, a regrowth and a way to expand um, that impact to not just the students that attend that elementary school, um, but all of their families and the community members um, that live in the area. So, you know, as much an impact as we're having in the garden, um, I would absolutely love to see that expand and um, not only expand in the fact that we'll have an open green space, which is a good step, um, but to have a community focused, um, usable space that will not only engage people, but bring them out and together. So. I um, just wanted to say, say thank you so much for even having this conversation um, and having me here. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. Next we have, uh, is it Kevin? I'm sorry, no, Pim and shit, Kevin Malone. Malone. Is Kevin on the line or is Kevin here? Oh, Kevin's here. Okay, Kevin, you have three minutes to make your public comments regarding the reservoir. 
Okay. Um, I'm just here. I wanted to commend everyone that I've heard today, including from the administration, from the May, the first week in May of 2022, when I discovered a letter that was written um, by Mayor Przicki requesting funds to demolish the reservoir and to look into the vision of residential development to now in January 2023, um, that that's off the table. And I think that it's very um, reflective of the strength of the community that even that first rally over 50 people showed up within like a day's notice. And since then, every um, Saturday, um, there have been meetings religiously to work towards helping um, develop a vision that is resident task oriented. And I think that the administration has listened and I think that that's really commendable. And I think that I have a question, but I don't, I know this isn't time for questions, but the, the picture that was shown with the demolition of the reservoir, does that mean that the current community garden, which is also still elevated from street level is gonna remain that level. And then everything else is gonna be brought to that level. And that does um, still then need and address the um, inaccessibility for people that have mobility issues if there is steep incline just to get up to a, a level. But I think that the 3.7 acres is such a nice large open space that will be an amazing place for um, residents for the entire city. And I do strongly believe in um, green energy and green ec understanding from childhood throughout, like the ecological, the importance of ecological education. But also I think um, we need to embrace the surrounding community as well. And um, there is a need for potentially having a lot an athletic field for some of the neighboring schools. And I do think we could add that into this component, but I do feel strongly that there should be absolutely no commercial development or residential development because we do not need that in this area. It's one of the most densely populated areas in the state of Delaware, and there's adequate housing that actually needs to be improved. We don't need to um, add any additional housing and the commercial district nearby, which is Union Street and 4th Street and Lincoln Street, that should be upgraded because I know there's been talk of potential commercial development on this block and I just don't think that would be appropriate whatsoever um, due to the historic nature and also the importance of establishing and maintaining open green space for the entire city, not just for the neighboring residents. That's all I have to say, but I just want to commend everybody for all their efforts and that's how we will move forward if we all keep working together and being able to listen to each other and talk with each other and not just talk at or to each other. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Kevin, for your comments. Well said. Um, do we have anyone else from the public that would like to make a comment regarding the reservoir? There is a comment sure. from Jensen at Public Works and then okay, one, we have one more gentleman. State your name, please. Hi, I'm Bob Davey and um, I've been meeting with the others uh, many of these weekends with Green for the Greater Good. I think what I wanted to just say is that um, the energy that this has kind of kicked up has been really tremendous. And I really feel that in a way, we, there's, this has been a service to the, com to, com to the community that this bond bill, before we knew what was going to happen with it, did arise because, um, you know, there's, there's just a lot of um, wonderful energy that, that will uh, eventuate in a lot of community uh, involvement, not just uh, demands, <laughs> let's do this, I want a pickleball court or I want this, I, you know, but, but um, a sense of uh, a real drive to, to make it work as, a, as an equal partner, you know, with the city and, and the other entities that will come into this. We're not, you know, no one's going away. Uh, and, you know, it's been lovely for us personally. We're relatively new to town. We've only been here for, what, two and a half, three years now. And, uh, you know, we've, we've met our neighbors this way and the dream of what will happen up there is is a real thing, and and that that kind of dream isn't isn't gonna um, languish, and it really all started just with the three ideas, you know, keep it green, keep
keep it community run and, and make it safe. And we've never really deviated from that and it's really came out of, you know, one of the things we've done on our website is to have people get, do a little survey where they get to comment. And it's, and it's also, by the way, the easiest thing to canvas for because everyone says, you know, you know the green, the, the, the space up there and they're like, oh, I love that. And we say, well, we just want to make sure that it stays community owned. And they're like, oh, absolutely, I'm behind that. So there, there's not a lot of, um, there, there's a tremendous amount of um, backing, energy. And I, we really, I really feel that the community, if we just ask them to, to uh, <laughs> be involved in this task force and give their input and come to kind of a, um, um, a, a, a group consensus on what to make out of it, that that will just energize the process and make it a real space, not something that was built prefab and then we hope that people will participate, that, but that it'll be really well used. And um, I just want to thank um, the council and everybody who's, who's, who's kind of backed uh, the effort and um, um, I guess that's it, thanks. Thank you. Okay, we have, um, we have Laura Green um, for public comments. You have three minutes to make your comments regarding uh, the reservoir. Thank you. Um, I actually joined the meeting late, so I only caught the last two speakers. So I'm not sure if I'll be repeating things that have already been said. Um, I'm part of Green for the Greater Good. I'm one of the founding members of the community garden that's currently atop the Rodney Reservoir. And I want to express I'm excited about the opportunity of having access to the large part of the reservoir, which has been uh, blocked from our use due to potential safety or liability issues. Um, we got permission to use the space from the city uh, a decade ago. and all the while have been secretly yearning to expand and include more of the community. I think it's a, it's a trend that the time has come. Many of uh, cities around the country are recognizing the importance of urban orchards, community shared gardens, uh, edible food forests, ecological uh, preservation, ecological uh, leaning into green energy and sustainability education for children and adults, public outdoor meeting spaces, the value of nature and sunlight in uh, urban environments for uh, the health of individuals in the community at large. I am really stoked to think about what the space could be used for to better uh, benefit more of the community. Um, I know some people had complained that it was locked access and privileged and um, m had to pay money to get in and whatnot, all of which was only because we were using the space as a garden with permission. Um, so obviously we didn't put in the locks and the payments of the existing garden were just to pay for the water supply and material upkeep. So I would like to see the space open to all generations in the community and uh, to support urban greening and uh, green flyway to preserve our slice of nature. I think that this park-like setting could be a unique in the city in that it's specifically uh, oriented towards um, sustainable uh, agriculture, community gardening, and uh, habitat preservation. I'd love to see uh, when the grading is done to have it not reseeded with grass, but with uh, clover or something that supports pollinators. Um, I'm really excited about excuse, the excuse energy me. that... Excuse me, Ms. Green. Um, your time is up, and I do have several other people that need to speak, but this is not okay. the end. That's okay. This is not the end of this conversation. I'm sure Great. we'll be back here again. Thank you. 
Next Thanks for your service. No problem. Good job. Next, we have Sarah Lester. Sarah Lester on the line. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, you have three minutes to make your public comments regarding uh, the reservoir. Thank you, Chair. Um, this, my name is Sarah Lester. I'm the president and CEO of Cornerstone West CDC, and we are the backbone and fiscal agent for West Side Grows Together. I'm also a resident of the West Side, and I won't take up three minutes because I just, but I just wanted to say that I'm really excited to hear every single comment, like in this meeting. I loved the presentations. I appreciate the city's involvement, the city council's involvement. And I'll just say, you know, I, in my role for work and, and personally, I'm not a gardener. I, if that's always been clear, I have amazing staff and actually one, one person in the room, um, you know, Britt, who really inspires our team around the gardening piece. But what I have had the opportunity to be a part of in my work is being part of a community visioning process where all of these different ideas that even we heard tonight in this room come together and can contribute to an end product or an end outcome or an end park space. So I'm just really excited to support that type of process, that type of task force. And I just wanted to share my excitement with the room and just thank everybody for participating and speaking. Thank you, Sarah. You have a good night. Thank you. Um, next, we have Ms. Rose. Is Rose in a room? Or Lastly, we have Rose. You say she's on. Okay. I'm sorry. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. My name is uh, Ross Fenske, and uh, I have a family, and I live on 8th Street, right across the street from uh, the Razi Reservoir. Um, I recently read a, an article in the, the Delaware Online saying that this is an eyesore, and in a lot of ways, I take issue with that. Is that this? I bought the property four years ago, and that was one of the reasons why I bought it. It was green space, and it was something that really attracted me. Now that I have, you know, an 18-month daughter, I envision her wanting to grow up and being a, a part of that. I am a gardener. I have been a part of green for the greater good for, for, from the beginning. And, and the vision that we have is one for the community. And that is what's really important. I, you know, but being able to get, get involved with the community and having this as a green space, not just for a few people, but for the entire, you know, area. And the fact that it is, that it is on top of the hill, hilltop, we are close to a lot of the different areas. And I really think that being able to uh, 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 see the future of this green space for, well, our children, not just my child, but our children, I think is really important. And education. I've been going down to Cool Springs, seeing how you have all of the signage there. and. I'm inspired by the fact that this is helping people to learn. And that's what I see. This is, this is a part of the greater Wilmington. And I think the history that's behind here, I have you know, talked to people and they have you know, told stories about playing basketball, playing football, going sledding down it. It's a part of the community and I really want to see it stay a part of the community so that it's not gated off. It can be like Cool Springs, and it can invite everyone to the area, and so it can be safe, it can be communal, and we can really, and you know, and have it be as a place for the community to come together. This is a vital place. It is green, and this is truly one of the reasons why I moved here to Wilmington on 8th Street in the 1500 block. I really appreciate the council taking, taking the time to address this issue. Um, this is personal for a lot of us here, and, and I am really happy to be a part of, of that group. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Um, lastly, we have um, Mr. Vince. You have final comments. You have three minutes. 
Thank okay, you, uh, once, once Madam Chair. Uh, I just uh, there was a couple of comments from uh, some of the speakers regarding ADA access to the site. I just wanted to clarify, based on the uh, the, the demo plan that we have uh, put forward, which, which would uh, which would be to uh, minimize the truckloads. Uh, of debris uh, and uh, the amount of debris removal that uh, with the grade, the regrading of the site, there would be uh, grade level access from the sidewalk on the H Street side. So there would there would not be any steps or any obstacles for uh, uh, you know for any uh, for ADA uh, related uh, for folks to be able to get onto the property from that side. Okay, um, Leslie, um, come up and say your name, uh, sir. His name's on there, but. I signed off to speak. Oh, yeah, I think so. Go, go ahead. Okay. My name's Joe Co Francisco. I live at 9th and Clayton 906, and I've been there for 64 years. So I've grown up at the reservoir, sledded up there, played baseball, football, ice skated on the top, seen the little quartet on the A Street Pavilion. So I've seen that. How that, how that area has been used, and it's always been used for the public. And it's a great green space, okay? And it should stay that way for the use of the new generation who has moved into our neighborhood. There are 11 children on my block right now. All, and there's nine of them under the age of five. So we have young people coming in our community. That's on one block from 9th to 10th on Clayton. And they're coming in, they're buying their first time houses. They're buying in because part of it's the reservoir. They like the reservoir. The people on 9th Street will tell you, we bought because of the green space at the reservoir. So the green space is very important to stay that way. Uh, I'm glad there was information on the uh, no asbestos because that was one of my concerns. So we're gonna do soil and concrete samples, okay? And according to this tonight, they did do that, okay? Now, the property did deteriorate up top, the roof, okay? Well, that was that, that due to lack of maintenance. The, the, the vault was no longer used. Nobody ever went up there and checked anything. The trees grew, the roots got in the top of the vault, into the roof, cracked the roof all up, made it unsafe. Well, that was to happen with, with time and neglect, you know. Nobody had any reason to go up there and check it. The water guy, he'd go in the building and look. I know that for a fact. Uh, but it should stay green. And the really, the next phase, the demolition shouldn't start until we have what the next phase is supposed to be. That way we know where we're going. Okay, and I don't know whether the next phase is in place and written down. Okay, I know the mayor, he, he, he talked about developing property. We don't need no more housing up there. He was talking about tax revenue. You could disrupt the whole neighborhood, destroy a neighborhood to create a few houses because it takes forever to develop properties between the digging, construction, so on and so forth. So my thing is, it's a great green space to be used by the next generations. It should stay that way so they can enjoy it. The young kids can learn up there. And I'm an old man and I like seeing the young kids. It, it revitalizes things. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to keep our neighborhood uh, safe and, and, and stable. And thank you very much. Thank you, thank everybody. Um, I think that was last presentation. Um, I would like to say that um, I'm just, you know, so proud of this community for sticking together. And um, as I've talked to Kevin several times, and it is because of this unity um, that things are happening the way it happens. So kudos to this whole group for keeping things, um, for staying involved in your community. More communities should do this. And um, um, it's good to see you all here. Um, with that being said, next we have an, uh, another presentation. Thanks a lot for coming out. Okay. Thanks again. Thank um, you. Next we have um, a presentation from Lee Boulevard. Um, uh, Kev, um, Vince, would you like to speak regarding the, uh, the Lee Boulevard uh, Delta project? 
commissioners going to handle that one, uh, okay. Madam Chair. Okay, Commissioner Kelly, would you like to speak regarding the Lee Boulevard sure. Road relocation? Um, so I'm just going to introduce my colleagues at Del Dot. Um, this is a project that we asked them to jump on really quickly. Um, it's a, a demonstration of a reconfiguration for Lee Boulevard to address um, the severe seat, uh, speeding issues that are happening um, on that um, stretch of Lee Boulevard. And so they're here to um, pre present with that um, would look like and to get some community feedback and um, you know see what see what the temperature is for a lane diet um, which will help the speeding issue and um, from there we can start planning uh, pop, uh, a change pop in the spring which is um, has been requested by numerous um, people in the community so uh, Del Dot Peter, if you'd like to take the reins. Sure. Good evening, and thank you, Commissioner. So, um, my name is Peter Haig, Del Dot's Chief of Traffic Engineering. I'm joined with uh, some of my counterparts uh, here at Del Dot, um, as well as our consultant, RK and K Support. So, Sonia Legrand, Traffic Studies Manager, Nicole Wilson, and Stephanie Everett. Um, our consultant team from RK and K. So we're going to dive right into it. So I'm going to turn things over to Nicole uh, to walk us through the presentation. Thank you. Nicole, you may get started. Uh, Good evening, everyone. I'm Nicole. I think the presentation was provided to you guys. Um, yes. Do you have that uh, WINT? There we go. Awesome. Okay. Still loading for me. Okay. Thank you. Wrong presentation. There we go. Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. I'm Nicole Wilson. I work for RK and K as a consultant for Del Dot. Um, we're here tonight to discuss the road reconfiguration concept for Lee Boulevard. So if we go to the next slide, um, Del Dot has been receiving concerns regarding speeding and safety issues along the Lee Boulevard corridor. Um, that corridor can be seen in this bottom section of the slide. Um, we looked at several traffic calming options, had a meeting to discuss with the community last year, and as a result, we've developed a road diet concept plan um, while we were looking into these traffic calming options, we collected several types of data for this roadway. Um, the first one being traffic volumes. And so if we go to the next slide, we have our volume data. We collected turning movement counts at key intersections. We looked at average daily traffic and heavy vehicle percentages. Uh, the average Excuse me, because someone put their phone on mute. Excuse me. Somebody has to put their telephone on mute. Thank you. Yeah. You can continue. Thank you. Um, we had an average daily traffic of around 6,000 vehicles on the Boulevard, um, which fell into the category in this figure on the right, um, which looks into federal highways thresholds for when a roadway diet might be great or good or not so great. So we fall into this green category that is that says great candidate for a road diet with the 6,000 vehicles uh, per day. The second type of data that we looked into was speed data. So if we go to the next slide, we collected speed data on Lee Boulevard uh, to help calibrate our models. Um, so on the next slide, it shows where we have, where we collected the data um, on a straight segment, not near any of the traffic signals. And the third type of data that we looked into was crash data. So if we move to the next slide, we have our crash data from the past 17 years along the corridor. The thing to note on this slide is that there were a lot of, or the, the most common crash type was angle crashes. These typically occur at intersections. 
So we looked into ways to address uh, those angle crashes. So moving into the next slide, we have our typical, uh, typical sections for the existing, which is the top, and the proposed, which is the bottom. So existing section, this, is, this view is if you're driving along the road. There's currently two lanes in each direction, all 10 foot lanes. And our proposed section would be maintaining one lane in each direction with a two-way left turn lane in the center with bike lanes on either side. So the next slide, if we could move one more. Um, there's a lot of words on this slide, but there are a lot of benefits to a road diet. Some of the ones to highlight here are that we would be giving a dedicated space for left turns, both to and from Lee Boulevard, which is expected to have safety benefits, especially for those angle crashes that I mentioned earlier. Um, it also shortens crossing distance for pedestrians and provides that dedicated bike space. Uh, we do have a full concept plan for this, and we've split it up into four slides so that everyone can kind of see it. Um, so if you move to the next slide, it'll be the first one. So here's our first concept slide. We're gonna move from west to east as we move along. And the thing to note here is we have the northbound Miller Road approach going on to Lee Boulevard would be modified to have a yield control. And you can see and along this corridor here, we have along Lee Boulevard, we have the two way left turn lane in the middle. We have one lane in each direction and the bike lanes on either side. So moving to the next slide and further east, this is just a continuation. You can see it moves throughout it moves throughout the whole corridor. We have our unsignalized intersections of Franklin Place and Coverly Road. So the left turns can move in and out um, in a safer manner. And if we move further east, we have on the next slide our signalized intersection of West Matson Run. And this is on this slide, it shows that we are going to maintain all existing left turn storage for the signalized intersections. And that is similar for moving further east. Um, we have our signalized intersection of um, Washington Street, which is on the next slide, if we could continue on. So again, we have our, our left turn lane storage um, on the eastbound, westbound approaches. Um, and then on the westbound approach, we are planning on modifying the lane use just to tie into this road diet. We did do some analysis to make sure that this was gonna work operationally. Um, so if you go to the next slide, we do have some numbers. Our measures of effectiveness for this analysis was level of service and delay. So level of service A is the least delay and the level of service F is the most delay. As you can see here, most intersections are expected to operate at the same level of service or even better with the road diet. So moving on to the next one, um, we did estimate the cost for the signing and striping that would be required for this project. And that wound up being around $90,000. Um, this does not include any modification to the signals on the study segment. So these, these actually are city of Wilmington signals. And so Delta and the city will need to coordinate the on the mobilization of forces to complete any signal modifications, such as the signal head slides or phasing and timing modifications. Moving on to, I think, almost the last slide, we have our next steps. So uh, after funding is procured for this project, we would set up a project website with the earliest implementation um, being spring or summer 2023. And in the meantime, we are looking into a phase two, which would extend this plan, this concept roadway diet um, to the east. So from Washington Street to North Market Street along Lee Boulevard. And with that, that's really all we have. There's a question slide at the end and um, we did pass along the full concept plan if you wanted to look into that a little closer. Uh, no, thank you. Um, great presentation. Um, I'd just like to say, Councilwoman Gray would really be happy to have heard this because yeah. This is all she talked about was the Lee, Lee Boulevard um, roads getting repaired in Washington Street. 
So I really appreciate, you know, the presentation and the work y'all have done um, with this, uh, with Dale Dot. Y'all have done a great job. Um, do I have um, anyone? It's just a presentation, but it is in there. Are there any council members that have any questions regarding the presentation? Do we have anyone from the public that has any questions regarding this presentation? I'd like to make a comment. Laura Green. Beg your pardon? Laura Green. Okay, Laura, could you um, could make your comments regarding the Delta presentation? Yes, thank you. Um, it's Laura Filon, actually, from Green for the Greater Good. I actually live uh, not far from Lee Boulevard uh, mm -hmm. by PS Department Middle School. Um, I am very supportive of this idea. I, I am a big fan of increasing bike lanes, on, especially on major arterial uh, roads throughout Wilmington. So I just want to express my support. I, I do have a question. Is there any way that the bike lanes currently on Miller Road can be configured to connect? I, I noticed on the drawing that they sort of start and end at, at the intersection between Miller Road and Lee Boulevard. That, that would be my only concern, that there's sort of a no man's land for bikers. But I fully support bike lanes on both sides. And hats off. Thank, Thank you, you, Laura. Um, we don't, um, they don't answer questions. We just take the comments. And maybe someone, we do have your information. Maybe someone will reach out to you. Um, thanks a lot for your comments. Do we have any other, anyone else from the public that has any comments regarding Lee Boulevard? Okay, seeing there's no comments from council members or from the public, uh, just like to thank Dale Dot again for that presentation. And that looks uh, looks like that finalizes our agenda for tonight. And with that being said, is there a motion to? I would like to thank y'all for coming out. Um, Loretta always spoke highly of y'all, so I'm glad to see y'all here. And she was very, I wish I would have said this when y'all was on, she was very passionate about that reservoir. So I'm glad everybody came out. Um, with that being said, is there a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried, meeting adjourned. Thanks again for coming Ladies, out. Thank you very much. Yeah.